Hey y'all, welcome back. Thanks for checking back in. Um, obviously you guys saw the title, um, you know, when you're not where you thought you'd be. And for me, you know, what does that mean? Um, I guess just a little bit about me, if this is your first time on my channel, or in general, even if you're one of my subscribers, I feel like I really haven't introduced myself um, to my channel to my to my subscribers um you know i went into this youtube thing really wanting to do it but not knowing how not having a strategy and just going for it which i feel like can be a good thing can be a bad thing um so i just i feel like i haven't gotten the opportunity or made the opportunity to introduce myself um so yeah my name's jenna um this is daisy may's vlogs my dog's name is daisy may so that's where that came from. Um, I am currently 24 and I am living with my parents and I feel like growing up there was always that stigma of you know people that live with their parents after they graduate high school or college I mean not high school um, and I think I went into the idea of moving back in with my parents yes as an opportunity also maybe a little bit as a failure on my part or you know what did i do to make it so that i'm in this situation um and i can expand on that so i moved a couple states away after college um when i was in college i met my current boyfriend and so we've been together for a few years and we've lived in two separate states for three years because we we found jobs in different areas. At the time, we had only been dating for a year and I honestly really appreciate the decision that we made to not try to be in the same place as each other um, because we really got to develop as you know individual people um, living on our own, um, figuring out kind of just adult life by ourselves, but then every other weekend we, you know, got to see each other, you know, see a familiar face, explore our areas, um, with each other because we also, we both moved to places where we didn't have any friends, and so every other weekend was always that constant, like, we have someone who's here, um, who we can, you know, hang out with and explore the area with if, you know, we eventually found friends, but in the beginning it was definitely tough. Um, so I was there for a little over a couple of years, two and a half years, um, and, you know, the opportunity, I just feel like a lot of things culminated um, to make it so that I moved back to my parents, and when I was moving back with my parents, they were actually also moving themselves. They had bought a piece of property, um, 110 acres, in upstate New York, about 30 minutes from where I grew up, and it was that was a big attraction for me um, because over the last couple years, I've been on this kind of discovery um, journey, discovering, you know health and, and wellness um, topics or learning more about certain health and wellness topics that I, I wasn't educated on um, previously and that also attracted me to, um, you know, look into where our food comes from, um, started going to like farmers markets more, started looking for more organic products and grass fed and all this stuff, you know, when I was living in my apartment um, by myself. And I had been really attracted to this content on YouTube um, of homesteading. Uh, and it was something that I really, really wanted for myself eventually. And I was just obsessed with watching videos of these homesteaders all the time. And so when my parents bought this piece of property, um, I mean, the, you know, they were, it was limitless. Like we could do anything we wanted to do on this land. Um, my, you know, dad really wanted to get, um, chickens so we could have our own eggs, which I loved the sound of that, and, um, to build this, this garden, 
and to take on these like new things that we had never done before. You know, I had seen a lot about it, read a lot about it, watched a lot of it on YouTube, but having that opportunity to be able to do it myself when I previously couldn't in my apartment was really attractive. And um, at the same time, my boyfriend and I were trying to figure out like where we wanted to co-locate. You know, we had like, I was living in one state, he's living in the other state. We're both from a different state. And so I just took that leap, um, got a new job and moved back in with my parents. And that's just something I feel like maybe a lot of people would see as a failure. Like you, you failed to develop as an adult or you failed to make enough money as an adult or whatever the case may be as to why you're in your parents' house. But I feel like that stigma shouldn't even exist anymore because my generation, Gen Z, um, and like younger Gen X or younger millennials, we do not have the same situation at all as our parents or some older millennials. Salaries have not kept up with, you know, the price, the cost of living, buying homes or even rent and food and all that. And it's becoming very unsustainable. Um, and we also live in a society that kind of pushes um, constant, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Materialism. Um, always buying new things. And, you know, I'm sure part of the problem is people aren't very efficient with their money. Um, they don't budget very well. And I'm sure that's part of it. You know, a lot of people's, you know, a lot of people don't need like the new car that they bought, for instance. There's more people today that are falling behind on their car payments than the 2020 pandemic and um, the 2008 recession. I think that's a culmination of issues, but I do think the number one issue is just the economy and we are becoming very unstable and unsustainable in this society. Um, and so back to not being where I thought I would be, especially growing up or when I was you know, later in high school, if someone had told me that I would be 24, almost 25 and living with my parents, I'd be like, well, why? You know, do, do I not have a job? Did I become a deadbeat? Like, what happened? Um, and that's that's just not the case. And you have to take your situation and look at the bright side of everything. Um, for some people, living with their parents wouldn't be the best option for them. For me, I have a very nice family. Half the time, more than half the time, I don't even have to cook which is why I want to be honest with you guys in my situation and where I'm at because this is the type of content I really want to make, like this homesteader, homemaker type of vibe, but I know I'm not there in my life. And so I don't want to pretend like that's where I'm at, if that makes sense. Like I look at creators like Farmhouse on Boone or Hopewell Heights and I want nothing more than to be you know, a stay-at-home mom, you know, I want to be married, I want to have multiple kids, I want to stay at home, I want to cook fresh meals every day, I want to homeschool, I want to do all these things, and so I looked at their content, and I'm like, I really want to make content like them, that's what I want to do, but you just, you can't fake something like that, and when I first was starting my channel, I was, didn't really want to make it obvious I guess that I lived with my my family and that these you know sourdough recipes or whatever I was doing after work was like I don't know what I was doing during the day and that it's just not the case I do special projects so that I can film them and so that I can post them and that's not to say that I don't make sourdough bread or scones off camera because I definitely do but, um, like, for instance, you know, we have the garden, we've got a lot of stuff coming out of it, cucumbers, peppers, all that we want to preserve, um, and my mom, she, uh, works full-time, but she works from home, so she has the ability to 
make certain recipes and do certain things during the day that I can't. Um, and so there are just there are just things that I just can't capture on camera all the time. I'd love to show you guys that we made hot pepper jelly, but it was made during the day when I was at work, and that's just that's just how it is. And so I just want to share what I can, but I don't want to give off any like false impressions that you know I'm doing this like during the day as my job or like I don't have a job or whatever it is <laughs> I don't know um, and so I just want to take this subject this you know my background my story and encourage you guys to do whatever it is that you want to do or take steps to get where you want to get just because you live in an apartment doesn't mean that you can't can food. You don't need to grow your own food to can your own food. Go to farmer's markets, meet your local farmers, buy fresh produce, and preserve can if that's what you want to do. If you want to can salsa and tomato sauce, you don't have to wait until you have a garden to do that. You can do that now. Go find a farmer and buy in bulk. If you want to start a flower farm like I would eventually love to have a flower farm and you don't have land plant some container flowers just get experience with the flowers there's so much to learn I'm learning so much this year in my garden um, it hasn't been as successful as I wanted it to be but I'm learning a lot of things um, about you know plants and and saving seed um, and all of that so yeah if, if there's anything that you guys want to do but you don't feel like you're in the right place for it take certain little steps to get where you want to get so I eventually want to be like I said a stay-at-home mom who's making most things from scratch and all that I don't need to wait until I'm married and having kids to learn that it, it actually would be more beneficial for me to go into that situation having learned how to make my own pasta, how to make my own bread, how to can my own food. Um, so, yeah. And with that, I guess I can just tell you guys what I'm doing in this video, in the background here. Um, we made some burgers from uh, Good Ranchers. If you don't know Good Ranchers, they um, source all United States um, grown um, beef and pork and fish and whatever. Antibiotic free, grass fed, um, or wild caught and humanely sourced. And um, usually it's like small ranchers. Um, so love supporting them. Um, so we had, we had those for dinner with some zucchini fritters that I put some of our um, home homegrown jalapenos into to make them a little spicy, and it definitely did. It was a really good kick. Uh, we had pickles that we have made because we've just been drowning in cucumbers, and we had potatoes. Not the ones that we're growing because we haven't harvested any of those, but I will be excited to harvest those soon and um, when we do that I will be sure to get it on video um, and these later clips I am actually uh, canning relish because again we have a lot of cucumbers and we've made cans and cans and cans of pickles and I wanted to think of something different to do um, and I thought of relish and it's kind of a two birds with one stone thing because usually in relish you well, maybe not usually, but there's just such a thing as pepper relish. So, cucumbers, um, bell peppers, and I also added some of our jalapenos in there to give it a little bit of a kick and to use up some of our uh, jalapenos. We do have bell peppers on the way. They are growing. They're growing pretty rapidly, but obviously since they're bigger peppers, it's going to take a little bit longer to harvest them. So we don't have any of those yet, but they're coming. So this was a good trial run um, for something to use the peppers in as well. Um, I would probably tweak the recipe a little bit. I'll link the recipe below. Um, 
it just, it was a little too sweet, and I had already cut the sugar by a quarter of a cup, so I would just tweak it a little bit, but if you really like really sweet relish, you'd like it. It, it tasted good. I had one on, or I had some on my hot dog today. So I'm just getting the vinegar, sugar, um, mustard seed, celery seed mixture up to a boil, and then I put all my vegetables in there. The vegetables were soaking in cold water and pickling salt for like two hours. Um, I think that like rehydrates them and makes sure they're like more crisp. So yeah, soaked the vegetables for two hours, then made my vin vinegar sugar mixture, brought that to a boil, put the vegetables in, cooked that down for maybe like five minutes. Um, and then you get your sterilized cans out and fill them to the appropriate level, um, usually leaving like a bit of headspace. And I'm putting on my sterilized, um, what are they called? Tops and screwing on the lids and then putting them back in the water bath for 10 minutes. Um, for most of the things that, actually for everything that we've canned so far, our blueberry jam, syrup, pickles, all that, you just need to use a water bath. You don't need a pressure can. So yeah, took those out, labeled them, and then put them with the rest of our canned food. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching, li listening. If you made it to the end, um, I really appreciate you. Make sure to give a thumbs up and leave a comment for you know, what kind of content you want to see, um, more recipes or garden videos or something new. Let me know. Thank you guys so much. See you in the next one. Bye.